NASA Chief Astronaut Bob Bankin. Bob, um, the Soyuz is ready to fly. Uh, Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko ready to spend a year in space. What is Scott's level of preparation at this point, his state of mind as he embarks on an historic mission? Uh, Scott is uh, definitely ready to go for this one-year mission. His uh, previous time on orbit allowed him to really focus over the last year and a half or so to really get prepared. His personal effects are in order, and he's uh, definitely, definitely ready to go. What is the biggest challenge in your mind uh, for a crew member, both from a physiological and psychological standpoint, to leave the planet for a year, leave his family and friends behind, and tackle what will be a challenging year's worth of work on the station? I think the thing that will be most challenging for any of the crew members that go up, whether it's for a six-month mission or for a one-year mission, and Scott has a very good perspective on this, having already done a six-month mission, is preserving enough flexibility 
to be prepared for anything that comes his way. So over the year, it's really hard for us to predict exactly what's going to be expected of him while he's on orbit. You know, we'll have vehicles that come and go. We may have a contingency EVAs or otherwise that need to be put on his plate to go off and execute. We can't say what all those things are going to be right now, but uh, being prepared for all of those eventualities, I think, is the most challenging thing. Being emotionally prepared for all those eventualities is the most challenging thing, and I think Scott's ready for that. From an astronaut office standpoint, Bob, what do you guys have to do to take extra care, extra nurturing of a crew member on orbit for that period of time? One of the things that we really want to make sure that we take care of Scott with is, is having some flexibility with his time on orbit. You know, during the, the year that he's in space, he'll go through four different increments uh, and the ground teams associated with those different increments. By the end of the fourth one or the beginning of the third one probably, he'll have a pretty good perspective on what needs to be done and the timing and sequencing of things going forward. And so retraining those ground teams and taking into account Scott's experience so that he can contribute in that process as he goes forward is going to be really important. And so it's something that we've thought a lot about, you know, towards the later parts of the time he's on orbit. We really want to make sure that he has an input. He's got some flexibility to kind of tell the ground what the, the next best steps are, what the sequencing of activities should be so that he can be most efficient and get the most accomplished with the time that he has left on orbit. Dr. John Charles, NASA's Chief of International Science for the Human Research Program. John, behind you is the Soyuz vehicle that will transport Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko to the station to begin a year in space. For you, this must be a very important, momentous milestone. What are your feelings right now? Yeah, Rob, we're very excited to be here. This is a culmination of several years of work uh, to see the investigations come together for this, uh, this year-long mission, hopefully paving the way for future missions like this that will then lead us on to uh, Mars. So it's, it's very exciting and personally fulfilling to be here today. What are the things that you as a science team will be looking at uh, from week to week, month to month as this year unfolds? We'll be evaluating how the, the human body changes by measuring uh, uh, the Scott and Mikhail's parameters on a fairly regular basis, looking primarily for differences between uh, the one-year mission and six-month missions previously that, that uh, constitute a large data, large database. Uh, with uh, this knowledge of, of what changes, we'll know what to focus on for future missions to be sure we're prepared for long duration missions off to Mars. What is it that makes Scott Kelly a unique subject to do this, and uh, how are you going to track all of this over the course of a year? It's got to be an incredible undertaking. Well, Scott has uh, proved to be an excellent uh, test subject and an excellent uh, operator of the investigation so far, so we're very lucky to have him. And of course, one of his qualifications is the fact that he's flown previously in a six-month flight. We'll be making many of the same measurements on Scott on the one-year mission as we did on his previous six-month mission, looking specifically for the changes that occur in, in the body that might be related to the longer duration in, in flight. But his personal enthusiasm and his dedication to the work has uh, really made him uh, an exemplary subject in this case. Since I saw you yesterday, it's been just grand. <laughs> Are you getting excited, Scott? Or? You know, I think a little bit. You know, there's a lot of things have to happen between today and, and Friday. And it actually, right now, it's kind of, you, you get on this like very quick train that is moving in one direction and you don't have much control over it. So, uh, but up until today, it's been pretty quiet. So like right after this, um, and tomorrow there's like press conference, a uh, state commission, this movie that we watched, so it's a, uh, it's White Sun in the Desert. It's a, uh, you know, a movie that the Russians have been watching for years. It's a uh, tradition. We watch that. The next day we wake up and it's launch day. Even though technically it's not, but it's really the day you go to the pad, so it's kind of launch day. Wake up, do some, uh, have breakfast, you know, do some, pack your stuff, take a nap. We're actually going to go to the sauna, like, right before we uh, really? sit in the body for a little bit, yeah. a while, and very refreshing, cold water.
one of my dip in a bathtub, in this case, the ice bowl. So it's uh, it'll be interesting.